Hello, my name is Mohit Prabhushankar and this is our presentation about implicit saliency in deep neural networks. I thank the program and session chairs and all organizers who made this virtual conference possible. In this paper, we show that deep neural networks trained for object classification or detection have implicit saliency embedded within them. We extract the saliency based on the well-studied expectancy mismatch hypothesis and we do so in a completely unsupervised fashion. The saliency is those regions in a visual scene that are most noticeable and attract significant visual attention from humans. Consider the image shown below. This is taken from the popular MIT 1003 database. This image was shown to a number of people and their eyes were tracked. The grayscale map on the right is a combination of all their gazes. Notice that all the human subjects focus their attention on the people and horse in the scene. Our goal is to objectively determine this grayscale map. Here we show a typical saliency approach, given an image, certain features that have been neurologically shown to surprise and inform humans are considered. But these are then weighted and fused to obtain the final saliency map. No doubt that the dog in glasses is both adorable and surprising, which holds the attention of humans hence making it salient. There are two broad approaches of innovating this pipeline. First one being designing better features and fusing them. This is called bottom-up saliency, a way of saying that saliency comes from the data itself and not the psyche of the individual looking at it. Color, intensity, orientation, and motion have been shown to effectively capture saliency. The other area of innovation is the top-down approach, where the weights of the individual features can be set based on the task that the subject is asked to do. An example is the presence of text or faces or objects. They hold human attention. Digging deeper into bottom-up saliency, the features are designed to measure new and unexpected regions in a scene. Color, intensity, and orientation do this job effectively because they allow expectancy mismatch to be measured. Expectancy mismatch is a concept in cognitive science. It occurs when a system receives information that is in conflict with some prior expectation. A red apple in an image with a dark spot in its center stands out because of people's expectation to see the apple being all red. This mismatch dark spot grabs human attention in a sense salient. Traditionally, expectancy mismatch has been conducted on low-level features like color and edges. In this paper, we introduce expectancy mismatch for semantic information in a top-down setting. Let's first discuss what it means to have expectancy mismatch in semantic context. The motivation for semantic expectancy mismatch comes from a concurrent paper we have submitted here at ICEP named Contrastive Explanations in Neural Networks. The details of its presentation are listed here, along with all the relevant info and links. Consider this image of a spoonbill. A state-of-the-art explanatory system like GradCam asks and answers the question of why there's a spoonbill in the image. Its visual answer is shown alongside. On the other hand, contrastive explanations answer the question, why is this a spoonbill and not some other bird, like why not a flamingo? And from our method, the network shows it's because there is no S-shaped neck in the input image. An alternative way of looking at it is the network is telling us that, hey, if it were a flamingo, I was expecting an S-shaped neck in the image, but it doesn't exist. Hence, it's not a flamingo. The neck is the semantic information that did not match the expectancy of the network. Similarly, between spoonbill and crane, it's the beak that did not match the expectancy of the network. The legs and neck of the spoonbill look nothing like that of a pig to the network. The same is the case with the band-aid as well. In short, we can obtain semantic information about visual scenes that do not match the expectation of networks. This leads us to our hypothesis. Combination of all expectancy mismatch regions is the salient region in the image. For bottom-up approach, saliency is a processed expectancy mismatch map. A stands to reason that for all possible top-down based expectancy mismatch maps, their combination is a saliency. Uh, note that this leads to our challenge, all possible maps. From the previous example, the number of mismatches can be infinite. Why not snake or why not a bird or dog and so on. This also raises the question of who sets the original expectancy for there to be a mismatch. The objective of this paper is to tackle this challenge in a formal way. We first set expectancy of semantic content of an image, then we provide a computationally feasible methodology to extract all possible expectancy mismatch content before combining them. We finally validate our saliency model against model expectancy features, model saliency, and other state-of-the-art saliency models. The structure of the paper and rest of the video follows this objective. We set semantic expectancy and extract mismatch before combining them to validate saliency. The outcome of this framework is an unsupervised saliency algorithm 
extracted from classification networks like ResNet, VGG, and Fastful RCNN. These networks are trained on ImageNet and Pascal VOC and have never seen eye tracking data before. This is one of the novelties of the proposed method. The other being that we extend the principle of expectancy mismatch to semantic information in the input. Let us start by deriving expectancy. We use deep neural networks to set expectancy. In this work, we use classification and detection networks. Consider an input X. It is passed through a network which classifies X as a dog correctly. Note that within the network, the dog is projected onto a manifold where its location is closer to the network's expectancy of what a dog is. The expectancy is the projection of data onto the manifold. Since network weights span the manifold, expectancy is defined as the projection onto the weights. Note that higher the layer, more is the semantic content. The network is trained to classify between 1000 classes within an image. Hence, they have to attend to the fine grain visual difference between classes to make decisions. Hence, there is an implicit saliency built within networks that we propose to extract. Now to introduce mismatch to the expectancy. Consider the previous case when the dog is projected onto the expected manifold. Mismatch would happen if the dog is projected onto a manifold where it is classified as a cat. The same set of features leads to the classification of cat rather than the correct dog. Notice that such a change in manifold can occur if the weights that span the manifold change. In this case, if W1 changes. This change of mismatch between the two manifolds is characterized by the gradients between them, rho L by rho W1. This provides the direction of mismatch. Projection onto these gradients is expectancy mismatch. Note that the mismatch manifold is spanned by the gradients of weights, while the expectancy manifold is the weights themselves. This provides a nice symmetry to the whole space spanned by the network. Going back to our earlier discussion of top-down versus bottom-up, we can finally see why the proposed method is based on top-down characteristics. From a bottom-up approach, an input image X can project onto a single manifold. On the other hand, expectancy mismatch can, mismatch can be introduced by backpropagating all trained classes, even when they're wrong, like the cat class when it was actually a dog. I now hand over the reins to my co-author Yutong, who will bring this home. Thanks, Mohit. I will go through the block diagram and methodology of extracting expectancy mismatch maps before talking about our result. Consider an input image that is passed through the CNN. After the feedforward process, the CNN will give a prediction. In this case, the image is that of a car. They will provide the unexpected stimuli to the CNN. For instance, first we get this is background. There will be an expectancy mismatch between the prediction and the unexpected stimuli. And we encode this mismatch using a loss function. Each loss encoded prediction error is back propagated to some layer L within the CNN. We call this a pseudo-silency map corresponding to the stimulus this is background. Same with the stimulus this is an airplane. We can get the pseudo-silency map corresponding to the airplane stimulus. Similarly, we can extract the pseudo silencing maps or expectancy mismatch maps for all possible stimuli until the last one, this is a car. The number of the stimuli is the number of classes the network has trained on. For instance, 1000 is trained on ImageNet. After generating pseudo silencing maps for all possible classes, we use statistical strategies to generate the final silencing map. Specifically, the unexpected stimuli are 1 cross R 1 hot vectors. R is the number of the classes in the model. pseudo silencing maps are M cross N cross K matrices based on the size of layer L. We calculate the mean and the variance of R pseudo silencing maps and combine them using pixel-wise multiplication. This is to keep the most recurring patterns within the channels among all maps. The pixel-wise multiplication yield the final silency maps, and this is our implicit silency generation methodology. We now discuss the experimental validity of our proposed silency algorithms. We show the following. Firstly, the expectancy mismatch silency is more correlated to human visual silency than expectancy silency. Secondly, our implicit silency is better than model silency on HVS eye-tracking data. Thirdly, our unsupervised algorithm holds its own against the existing silencing models trained on eye-tracking data. 
We first compare the performance of expectancy and expectancy mismatch saliency. For the expectancy, we take the activation or the projections on weight and use the same statistical strategy to get the saliency map. From the visualization, we can see that the activation features focus on edges and textures without specific localization. The proposed implicit saliency generates localized saliency maps, which are highly correlated with the ground truth. We apply two evaluation metrics for six different networks. Blue bars represent the feedforward features performance, and red bars represent the proposed method scan over feedforward performance. The performance of all networks over all layers improve. Also, if we look at the bars inside the dark blue boxes, blue bars can drop sharply from one layer to the next, and the right bars show a more robust performance. This result showed that the visual saliency is more effectively captured through the expectancy mismatch process compared against the expectancy process of common classification and detection networks. We now see how existing model saliency method compare against our implicit saliency method. GradCam and gated backpropagation represent the unsupervised model saliency method. Model saliency find the region in images and networks used to make decisions. The images in the bottom are examples of what webcam maps look like. From the table, we can see that we'll low-level features from GBP are important for a network to make its decision. They have relatively low correlation with human attention. Semantic features that are important for the network to make decisions are highly correlated to human attention, as seen from webcam performance. And this correlation can be increased by using proposed expectancy mismatch. We now arrive at our last experimental setup, comparison against state-of-the-art method. For those saliency detection methods, networks are trained with eye-tracking data. We compare our result against serogen MLNet DeepGIS2 and shallow and deep neural networks. All these methods are trained on eye tracking data from Silicon dataset. We take the code provided by the author and test it against the MIT 1003 dataset. Note that our proposed implicit saliency method is unsupervised. This figure shows the visualization result. Last four columns are the saliency results generated by the state of the art human visual saliency detection models. From this figure, shallow and deep neural networks cover some more comprehensive area. Serogen, ML9, DeepGIS2 have higher precision. Our proposed method is both process and fine grain. The visualization performance is comparable to those supervised methods whose models have been exposed to eye tracking data. The proposed method also achieves a comparable NSS and CC values without being exposed to the eye tracking data. We then check the robustness of the models. We add noise on the top of the input to check the robustness of all considered algorithms. We add Gaussian blur with radius 50 on the top of the input. Even though the performance of the proposed method under zero noise condition is not the best, it drops the least with noise added, which shows the proposed implicit saliency method is more robust. This brings us to the final contributions of the paper. We extract the implicit saliency from classification and detection networks that have never been exposed to eye tracking data. We use expectancy mismatch in semantic features in a top down fashion to do so. We motivated the use of gradient space to span this mismatch region and provided the methodology to combine all pseudo saliency maps to obtain an unsupervised and robust implicit saliency detection model. Further details and codes are provided in our lab website. Please feel free to check them out. And thank you all for tuning in.